بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله وسلم على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم أما بعد حبيت في الله continue on in our study of a نصيحة we reach the eighth point so here the sheikh now is mentioning about how to deal with the mistakes of scholars and du'a of Ahlul Sunnah. Okay, now he's specifically mentioning the importance of maintaining the status of the ulama. When you know someone, this is an alim who's known for the sunnah of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi wa Alaihi Wasallam, known to call to the madhab of the Salaf. And then he falls into an error, or he may not fall into an error, but he may be refuted by others. It may be based on desires, it may be based on their mistakes, it may be based on many reasons for uh, why these differences occur. That's not the issue at hand here. But, however, for whatever the reason in the case, <clears throat> being uh, whatever being the case, that it's important to maintain the status and the honor of the ulama. And... Uh, for those who want more details, for those who know Arabic, uh, Sheikh Ubaid uh, Ajabri, Hafidhullah Ta'ala, he mentions very nicely in his ex explanation of Shara Sunnah, he talks about this issue uh, and highlights this when he talks about Imam Barbahari's, uh, his explanation of Shara Sunnah. He mentions, as Imam Barbahari mentions that you know, uh, basically a Sunni, you know, and, and an alam from Ahl Sunnah can, uh, when he's going on the tariq, meaning the Suratullahi Mustaqim, the straight path, that he, he may fall into an error, but he's not doing it based on hawa, it's not his desires, and that you deal with him differently. And so Sheikh Ubaid expounds upon that. Compared to the person of Ahl Bid'ah, who falls into another mistake or another bid'ah or something, that his he is not his main his respect is not maintained because Aslan, he's already a mubtadia who has many errors in his foundation of the religion. That doesn't mean you have the right to lie upon him. That doesn't mean that you he's not a Muslim. No, that doesn't mean that you have a right to corrupt his speech or or portray him in any way or form which is not based upon the truth and not based upon. But he doesn't have the same. Uh, level of respect there's no respect is maintained because he's a person who's innovating in some aspects of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's deen in his usul in his foundation the sheikh says it is imperative that the scholars of ahl sunnah those who are recognized for soundness in aqidah and ijtihad academic uh, diligence in aiding the sunnah that their status be preserved and their prestige and rank be acknowledged it is not permissible to belittle them or accuse them of being innovators or accuse them of following their desires and being fanatical towards their opinions and or positions based upon a mistake that they have made in their ijtihad. Sheikh al-Islam ibn Taymiyyah says in this regard, there is no doubt that the mistakes made by this ummah in some of the precise matters, uh, <clears throat> matters of knowledge are forgiven and pardoned even in the issues of aqidah. So don't come up with a new principle, as some of the people have, who say, oh, if he makes a mistake in Aqidah, khalas, he's a mubtadiyah. La. He could make a mistake in some specific area of Aqidah. He could make a mistake. How many ulama? I know many ulama. I can name them by name, who people prop up, who we love, who are our mashayikh, but have had to make turajah. They've had to come back from mistakes that they made that were Aqidah related. So don't go, just because you hear a talab al-ilm make a slip of the tongue, he needs to be called on that. He needs to be called with gentleness. Don't take him off the sunnah, or don't think you have the right to take him off the sunnah, but he should be advised with regards to that issue. But this is not the case with the, most of the people. They don't know this, and they don't care, and they don't have fiqh fideen. So Shaykh al-Islam ibn Taymiyyah said, if this wasn't the case, meaning that... that, that you know, an, an alim from Ahl Sunnah could even make a mistake in Aqidah. He said, if this wasn't the case, then many of the virtuous scholars would have been destroyed as a result. Meaning that so many of these imams of Ahl Sunnah, the imams, <clears throat> Ahl Hadith, how many imams of Ahl Hadith, imams of the Sunnah, Imam Anawi, Imam Ibn Hajar al Asqalani, Imam uh, Ibn Hazm, how many a'imma? Uh, 
great imams that we love, and in even imams, muhaddithin, uh, some of the imams of hadith, that had mistakes in aqidah, that made some mistakes. Some of them had ashari, uh, more or less a ashari aqidah. Some of the scholars say directly, yeah, he, they were ashari. Some of them say they fell into, you know, ashari uh, mistakes as far as sifat, but the rest of their aqidah, of course, was sound. But they, but when it came to the al uh, asma wa sifat, it wasn't based upon their desires, meaning they were following the haq according to what they understood and according to their teachers in the environment around them. That this is how they learned that it wasn't the tarbiyah and the understanding necessarily of ahla hadith regarding al asma wa sifat. So they didn't follow those bid'ah from desires, and they were great imams preserving the sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. How many imams can we main, can we mention? How many imams of the Salaf even that fell into an error sometimes in aqidah? So with that being the case, they still their their level and their status was maintained and respected. He said, "For Allah forgives the one who is ignorant of the impermissibility of alcohol due to the fact that he was raised in an ignorant environment." coupled with the fact that he himself is not a student of knowledge. So the virtuous scholar, the one who is diligent in seeking knowledge and accor according to his ability in his time and locality, if th his intent is to follow the messenger sallallahu alayhi wasallam as much as he can, then he is more deserving that Allah should accept from him his hasanat, <clears throat> meaning his good deeds, and reward him for his ijtihadat, those things which he did uh, out of ijtihad and for his his um, juristic reasoning or his academic diligence, his striving to come to the truth, and not punish him for his error, which is in fact an actualization of the statement of Allah, Rabbana la tu'akhidna in nasina o akhfatna. Our Lord, don't punish us if we forget or fall into error. He also said, meaning Shaykh al-Islam ibn Taymiyyah, this is the opinion of the Salaf and those Imams qualified to issue legal rulings, like Abu Hanifa, Ash-Shafi'i, Athawri, and Dawood ibn uh, Ali, and others. They don't fault the Mujtahid who has erred in the fundamental issues of Aqidah of the religion, nor the subsidiary matters, like Fiqh, Ibn Hazm, and others also mentioned this about them. They mentioned that this was a well-known position amongst Sahaba and those who followed them in goodness and the Tabi'een and the well-respected Imams of this religion. They don't make takfir nor tafsiq nor fault anyone from the mujtahidun if they err, not in the manners of matters of aqidah nor in the matters of fiqh. And separation of the fundamental and subsidiary issues is only acknowledged by the people of innovation, the people of rhetoric, meaning Ahl Kalam, the Mu'tazila, the Jahmiyyah, and those who follow their methodology. So this is the Kalam of Shaykh al-Islam ibn Taymiyyah letting us know, as the Prophet sallallahu all the children of Adam commit sins and make mistakes, but the best of those are those who uh, make toba, those who repent. And, and knowing that, it should show us how we should deal. We should not be quick to throw someone off the sunnah when they are known for the sunnah. They are known for the sunnah. But if someone continues on many errors, then this is something different. Those, those are, uh, uh, that's uh, a, mas a mas'ala we need to look at in a, uh, you know, at another time, but it's, it, it, it shows us that of course that's not ala itlaq, that everyone can just make any mistakes. No, he's talking about issues of ijtihad, and he's talking about even that imam could have made a type of ijtihad even with regarding an issue of aqidah because it was, a, it, was a, it was something which was not maybe known by necessity in the religion or whatever. He was raised in an environment which he was influenced or all the other reasons for differencing, differing, differing as we mentioned, that these uh, could have influenced that great Imam and him not being thrown off the Sunnah of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi wa Alaihi Wasallam due to his mistake. That's the important thing to realize. If we were to uh, look at these issues the way the Imma uh, looked at those issues, we would have so 
so much rectification between our Salafi communities and we could sh shed light for others. Other people would love to come to the Sunnah of the Prophet Sallallahu and embrace the Madhab of the Salaf. But instead the people run away because they see how they differ and split and attack and make tahazib between themselves. The establishment of this principle does not imply that the scholar should not be advised if he errs. <clears throat> Rather, it is obligatory for the one who recognizes his error to advise him. This, in fact, is considered reverence of him and seen as an act of good. But this advice should be done with leniency and gentleness and in a manner that is commensurate with his prestige and rank and knowledge and virtue. If he retracts from his mistake and returns to what is correct, then this is accepted from him and it is not permissible afterwards to talk about him or blame him for his mistake. And there should be no doubt about his return to the haq. I think that's very clear. And if we could only implement this, we would be in a better status. Then the Sheikh said, if he doesn't retract his mistake, so this person stays on this error and these mistakes, based upon a particular understanding he holds or due to a misconception that has hindered him from understanding the truth of the matter, then the error itself should be considered. If in fact his error is something which is restricted to himself, then he is free from blame due to the fact that he is responsible for his own self-rectification. However, if his error has spread amongst the people, then they are to be made aware of it and cautioned against it in addition to the preservation of the rank and status of that scholar. It is important here that we draw attention to two important principles. So here the Sheikh is going to mention two important principles that are relevant with regards to maintaining, uh, you know, that advising and maintaining the respect of an alim. He says, first, dedicating oneself totally to the truth. This is the first thing. Second, preserving the status of the ulama. So that means that when, whenever an issue comes up to us, we should not be blinded that it's our, that just because we like that sheikh or just because we like that student of knowledge, we like that caller, they've given us a lot of good. And now you hear something, you don't just cut it off because it's against him. And this is where we, how many people do I still have contacting me about Faisal. They defend this man as many mistakes, even if we give you the evidence of his mistake, his own statements, books have been written, research has been done. His own statements bear witness that he is a pure, hardcore tekfiri. But yet they will call you a kafir, they will call you a monafic, they will spend all their energy and they still, because they love him and his personality and they believe that that's the truth. So here, bid'ah has clouded their judgment, and hawa, and ta'asab, and you know, prejudice, blind prejudice. Instead of looking at the issue, even some people make statements like, "Yeah, I know he made mistakes in this about the Sahaba, but he's still a great sheikh, and we should all get together and hold hands and sing kumbaya." They don't say that, but this is basically what he's saying: that we should, you know, those errors. Are no, these are serious errors, and his usul. And he is a preacher that need to be called, he needs to be held accountable for saying, you know, saying that some one of the Sahaba made a mistake because they, because, you know, they allowed the monafic, uh, uh, you know, to kill, to come into the community. And then he killed uh, Ali ibn Abi Talib or, or, or Uthman ibn Affan, radiallahu ta'ala anhum ajma'in. You know, saying things like this, uh, this who preceded him? Men sabaka bi the qawl. Who preceded you in this statement? These kind of statements that make shortcomings in the Sahaba and so forth, he needs to be called upon. And you can't follow anyone in their mistakes. The second point he's mentioning is preserving the status of the ulama. So we don't preserve his status because he's a takfiri, his usul. He's, it's clear from his many, many statements. But if it's someone who's known for the usul of Ahl Sunnah, they known for khair, and calling the people to adhere to the method of the Salaf, then they should be, their honor should be maintained. He said, these two principles do not contradict one another as far as Ahlul Sunnah are concerned, and none should go to the extreme concerning one of them at the expense of the other. Indeed, loving the ulama and acknowledging their rank and status does not mean that you have to be silent about their mistakes or avoid cautioning the people against them. Also, devoting yourself totally to the truth, coupled with cautioning the people against the mistakes 
of a scholar does not mean that you are belittling him or discrediting him. Rather, it is possible to combine the two, but only for the one whom Allah has granted tawfiq success to do so. The one who knows the methodology of the ulama when it comes to highlighting some of their mistakes and cautioning against them without belittling them has truly actualized this matter. And there are many examples of this in the speech of the ulama. And we ask Allah the Almighty to accept our good and forgive our evil. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Ala Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam.